Hello there and welcome to League of Ideology. The point of this series is to figure out how champions abilities work if magic isn't the answer. What would happen if a beam of sun were to fall down to the earth at light speed? What are dark spheres actually made of? And how hot is a giant flaming bear? This and everything else is what I'll attempt to find out. Starting off, we have Diana. Bring down the sun. Diana has always been an interesting champion and one I enjoy playing. But, except for just white light, what is her magic actually? Firstly, let's take a look at Diana's passive. Every third hit, she cleaves nearby enemies using moonlight. This is a great place to start off, as her passive doesn't have any finesse or small thing to it. It's just her using magic. First, why does Diana constantly have extra attack speed and bears don't, hmm? Right? Second off, I want to know how strong the moonlight actually is. Since Diana's magic comes from the moon, it would be safe to assume that Diana actually pulls moonlight down to earth, like some kind of witch doctor, and condenses it into herself. So that's what I'll use. What we need to figure out is, how many locks the moonlight is, what type of light source it is, and the surface area of the earth, split in two. From this, we can get the exact amount of that, and then figure out if she could blow your face off your head. Well, moonlight is, on a night without cloud, set to one lux, so that's quite easy. For the next topic, here's a little about light sources. In short, light has different kinds of values depending on where they're from. But sun moonlight is set to 15 statically. Now, the surface area of the Earth is... well, easy, it's... just a thing. 550,800,000 km squared. So that equals... Uh, 275,400,000 km squared. With this, we can show that Diana pulls 18,360,000 Watt, which is a lot, but not even close to enough. In other words, we're not done here. We need to take this number and apply it to Diana's cubic meters. Diana's height is estimated to be 1.77 meters. So we'll take her height and divide it by 3 to get her cubic meters. You've probably never seen this method before, but seriously. How often do we want to know a human in cubic meters? If you ever wanted to, you'll have a very weird job. Now, since the energy doesn't spread out, it gets much, much stronger. And to be exact, it becomes 31,180.6 kilowatt per Diana. Yes, she is now a measurement unit, and when Riot takes over the world, I'll be the one that came up with it. That number is the equivalent of not one, not two, but 766,000 light bulbs burning at once. You think that's a lot? Well, it is, but it's not even the true number. I've been calculating in a single lux, and one lux is the same as the full moon at night. But, take a closer look at Diana's abilities. See anything weird here? Well, except for the white color, does it really look like moonlight to you? It's not possible to see through it, so instead of one lux, we have to turn it up a lot. To be unable to see through light, it has to be between 32 and 100,000 lux. Looking at it again, it's not blinding enough to hurt our eyes, yet it's strong enough to be completely intransparent. This place is at the lowest of the highest, 32,000 lux. With that said, let's calculate the real strength of Diana's moonlight. So we take a lot times 15 and divide it by something to get 58,752 megawatt of power. That's pretty insane, don't you think? Oh wait, no normal person actually knows what that is. For comparison, the world's largest nuclear power plant makes a little less than 4000 megawatt a day. In other words, Diana uses over 2 weeks of nuclear power each time she uses magic. Now that's a lot! Moving on, would you believe me if I told you that 3 of Diana's spells actually uses gravity? Diana's Q is the exact same thing as her passive, but it has another element to it. No weight calculations are needed, since what she does is actually creating a zone of repulsion in the middle of where the moonlights need to hit. In fact, her crescent strike is not only a straight skill shot, but it actually goes back to its original position after passing the repulsion zone. Also, just FYI, standing in the middle of it would rip you in half. On to her next ability. Diana's W, Pale Cascade, summons three orbs that circulate around her, and explode when someone touches them. But why do they circulate around her? And what exactly are they? And what are they made of? Well, for anyone that hasn't figured it out yet, they're supposed to be moons orbiting Diana in place of planets. I would put a joke about being fat, but that would be a very low blow. Now for the hard part. 
What I want to know is, what are they made of and why the hell do they explode? Even more, how does a bit of dust function as a shield? Well, first off, we need to know how big the spheres are. And a single sphere is 29 pixels long. Now, to get how much a pixel is in meter, I went into a game and suicided as Timo, cause what else would you do? An official ride statement says that Timo is exactly 1 meter long, so he is perfect for measurements. And I didn't actually need to kill him, but, you know, why not? My screen showed that Timo is 72 pixels long. Therefore, we can divide that by 100 cm to get how long one pixel is. 0.72 cm. So, 0.72 times 29 equals 20.88 cm. Then cut this in half and you get the radius, which is 10.44 cm. And then simply use like this to get the volume. Now then, what the crap is inside of them? What exactly is light enough to float, but can still explode? Yeah, you guessed it, gas. But there is like a gazillion gases out there, so how are we even gonna figure this out? Well, since Diana's build each comes from the moon, the gas has to exist there too, right? So, after looking at which gases exist on the moon, I figured that the spheres most likely consist of methane, as methane is the only highly explosive gas in the moon's atmosphere. So, how much gas is inside of the spheres? Well, methane weighs in at 0.66 kg per cubic meter. So the way we get the number is just dividing the volume by 0.66. All in all, 31.4 kg of methane. That's almost as much as me after eating chili. But, for methane to explode, it needs to be mixed up with air and have an ignition. Air is quite easy. When the sphere breaks, the air around is mixed in until suddenly... Boom. But where does the ignition come from? Well, the ignition actually comes from the shield itself, which is, by the way, made of dust and vapor. Since the air around Diana's body is at this moment, at the very very least, 580 degrees Celsius high. Which is also why it's the shield. You know, try go and punch some fire, and check how well it works as a shield. The reason behind this high temperature is that methane self-ignites at 580 degrees Celsius. In short, the ignition for the methane actually comes from the temperature being so high around Diana that it doesn't need actual ignition, just heat. <laughs> Seems like Diana has two different kinds of hot. Now then, moving on to Diana's E. First off, what does Diana actually do? Well, it seems like she actually absorbs gravity around her, pulling it into herself. Just look at everyone hit. They begin to slowly float towards her, so she didn't just remove it. But if you absorb gravity, what happens? Well, you get heavier. So, I'm gonna find out exactly how much weight Diana gains. First off, we need Diana's area. So we start out by taking Diana's width in pixels. This is 43. Then 43 times 0.72, just because we all like the Timos. So, we end up with 30.92 cm per Diana. Hmm, Diana is now both pixel centimeter and weight unit. I'm gonna be a legend in the future. Radius again is half, which is 15.48. And we get the area by saying this number times 2. In the end, 7.528 square meters. Keep this number in mind, it's gonna be important later on. Now we need to know how big the circle where Diana absorbs gravity from is. Using the Diana scale, we can see that the circle is 13 Dianas long, or around 559 pixels. When we then remove the excess pixels, we get 531 pixels, or 382.32 centimeters. Half of that is radius, which means the total area of Diana is 1147.42 meters squared. We can then divide this area by Diana's to get that she absorbs 150.5 times her own gravity. Now after all this bullshit, how much does Diana actually weigh? Well, Diana's weight goes up to 11,603.55 kilograms. That's the same as a medium-sized car. But there is one problem here. This is assuming that Diana is undressed, which I totally had to look up. But then I went to research a bit, and it seems that a standard plate armor weighs between 21 and 47 kilograms. Well, Diana is missing the leggings and the helmet, which weighs in 6 kilograms. It's also not a heavy armor, we can at least see that much. So, I choose to place it at the lowest and subtract 6 kilo. In the end, her armor is just around 15 kilo. And now, let's redo all this shit. 77.1 plus 15 equals 92.1. So we substitute Diana's weight for this number. 
and we have ourselves 30,861.05 kilograms. That's more than 15 ton of Diana. And in comparison, one adult elephant weighs around 4 ton. Ha, <laughs> now we seriously need one of those token cartoon weights. With the power of a nuclear power plant, with the weight of an elephant, this is I, Diana, and I'm here to kill you with the speed of... What exactly? Diana's ultimate turns her into pure moonlight, and she quickly dashes to her target. We have already done moonlight, so there's only one thing left to do. Figure out exactly how fast Diana is. Hopefully she is fast, or my sister won't let me forget that song. <laughs> well, first off, we need to take Diana's ultimate range. Since we already have the scale for pixels to centimeters, this is easy enough. The range of Diana's ultimate is 20 times Diana minus 18. This gives us 842 pixels. Then using the Timo scale, and we get a range of 606.24 centimeters. Though, since she's in the middle, she actually only moved 303.12 centimeters. But that alone won't answer how fast she moves or how fast she accelerates. For that, we need to look at how many seconds it takes her to move this distance. So, I checked out exactly when she begins to when she stands still again. The short version is, she is fast as fuck. But the longer version is, she moved 3 meters in 8 frames, which is 0.26 seconds. So, how fast does she accelerate? Well, Diana accelerates from 0 to 11.65 meters a second instantly. You know, that's enough to rip off your head. And in comparison, the world's fastest accelerating car, the Ariel Atom, has an acceleration of, guess what? Exactly the same speed. Diana literally rivals our world's best car in this category. But because of the range limit, we unfortunately can't really determine how fast she can go maximum. Though, the thing is, she is pure moonlight while holding, so Diana's top speed is most likely the speed of light itself. I don't think Ariel Atom can match that. In the end, to summarize, Diana's moonlight has the same power as 14 power plants. Her Q bends gravity, her W creates methane bombs and the shield that makes a desert look cold. Her E makes her as heavy as 4 elephants, and her ultimate turns her into a car that could drive at the speed of light. You know, I'm happy that Diana is out of the matter. If she wasn't, she would rip the head off of everyone. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching it, cause I sure as hell did enjoy making it. So much so, that I'm already starting on the next champion today. If you have any idea about how I can improve the next video, feel free to say so in the comments, I only want to make it better. Now leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.